Okay, and hey everybody, welcome to Chew Stream. Um, hope everybody's having a wonderful Thursday. I know I am. It's been a great week, you know. Uh, Robert Condo, art director, one of the art directors at Pixar, came to Toronto. He's going to be showing his film, uh, The Dam Keeper, at uh, TIFF Kids um, on Friday and Saturday. So I'm going to go check it out on Friday if anybody else wants to come. Um, Robert's going to be there. Kay and I will be there, as well as, you know, many others. It's important, you know, to if you want to be in the industry, to know what's going on in the industry. And, uh, you know, don't just stay in your house all day. Okay, so, for those of you that have never, you know, participated in the Chew Stream, what's this thing all about? Well, it's all about just getting together every week and just, uh, you know, doing something that is strictly for the love of art, for your love of art. Uh, for my love of art, and I'm going to be drawing something here, and I hope you are too. If uh, you know, if you can, definitely just just start sketching with me, okay? And the whole entire idea here is that it's kind of like an outlet, kind of like a little club where we get together every week, every Thursday, and we talk about art. You know, talk about um, you know, I share with you the things that have helped me throughout my career. Hopefully, it'll help you throughout your career. Uh, or hopefully it just gives you a different kind of insight into you know the whole business of art and um, hopefully it's interesting <laughs> right okay so how this is gonna work is you're just gonna post your you could post Chew stream and a link to this broadcast on your Facebook or Twitter I'll pick someone to uh, give this drawing to or you can just go to bit.do slash April 10 dash Chewstream and it'll lead you to a Facebook page where you can you know write down your questions you can already see that some people have already written down a bunch of questions and I'll try to answer them all okay or as many as I can anyhow um, and if you share that page you're also you know kind of qualifying yourself to have a chance to win uh, this drawing that I'm going to do, you know, live on the stream. Okay, and so the idea here is all about positive vibes. It's all about you know gathering of like-minded minds, and um, yeah, and just encouraging everybody to keep going. So how we usually start this off is. Um, we start off with a little roll call. You know, so if you want to just write down your name or write down uh, where you're from, I'd be happy to give you a little shout out. Uh, just to show everybody that you're not alone out there. You know, we're not alone out there. There's people out there all over the place with the same kind of drive that we have, the same kind of ambitions, the same kind of goals that we have. You know, so I could see Atlanta, New Hampshire, Texas, Dallas, Texas, Russia, Malaysia, France, Lithuania, Netherlands, Malaysia again, Italy, Pittsburgh, Brazil, awesome, Romania, right on, California, Toronto, whole bunch of people, whole bunch of people, that's great, and it's great to see such um, diverse diversity out there so um, let's go to the questions okay so like I said if you want to post any questions all you have to do is just um, you know go dot go to bit.do slash April 10 hyphen chew stream okay and you can find me right there you could ask whatever questions you want and uh, you know, I'll try to answer as many as I can. Um, let's start off with uh, Rissa. She said, um, 
you know, her question is, how do you deal with artistic frustration, creative block? You just, you try to get used to it, okay? So, <laughs> how I look at creative block, artistic frustration, you know, like when you're working out, you get sore muscles, right? You have, um, you get sore muscles, you, you get tired, these kind of things. That to me is frustration for your brain. You know, your brain is not going to strain muscles. Instead, it'll come in the form of uh, frustration. Frustration is always like when you're trying to figure it out. You're trying to find a way somehow and you can't and you get frustrated, right? That's kind of like what happens to all of us. Um, the people that exercise, we know that um, it's all about embracing that frustration, embracing that pain, so to speak, and uh, actually looking for it, getting used to it, living with it. And that's how I deal with uh, artistic frustration. I think about it in that way. And when you do think about it in that way, no longer are you, you know, super frustrated with, um, you know, I just can't figure it out. Oh, I'm so upset. Instead, you're like, wow, I'm, you know, I'm pushing hard. I'm uh, thinking really hard. I'm pushing those big weights. If you're drawing and you're never frustrated, that's because you're not pushing yourself. You're not um, really pushing yourself to your limits. You're doing things that are much more comfortable for yourself, which, which is fine too, but if you're looking to grow, then look for that frustration. And if you're looking to grow all the time, it's going to be very hard for anybody to catch up to you. And it'll be very, you know, it'll be much easier for you to start catching up to other people. So look for that frustration. Look to learn. Look to always challenge yourself. Because it's super hard to, um, to not be valuable if you're constantly looking for knowledge. Even when you have a whole bunch of knowledge and you're looking for more. Like yesterday, um, Robert Kondo, he went to Ubisoft to do a presentation, a, a workshop to, you know, share his methods and how he does things with uh, set design. Kay went there too. You know, she sat there not because she has to, but because she wanted to. I mean, that's the kind of person that she is. So, you know, if you want to do what she's doing, which is a lot, adopt the same kind of principles, the same kind of practices. A great kind of role model for that is Nathan Fowkes. He is legendary at his discipline in always practicing. He has just tons and tons of sketchbooks of just like everyday sketches that he'll do, everyday little studies that he'll do. It's incredible the amount of discipline and, uh, and determination and all that good stuff that Nathan has. And you can see it's paid off tremendously. Let's see what the other question was. Um, Andy says, I don't have an option to attend a full-time art school, but I think I would benefit from having a structured curriculum to follow as I uh, practice painting on my own. Let me look for the question here. Not sure what I should work on next. I'm unsure if I spend enough time on a given fundamental or technique for moving on to something else. Do you have any tips to building a and following a good curriculum? Um, for me, when I was learning, it was all about really understanding whatever it is that uh, was the lesson at hand. You know, like I would do the lesson, but I would really just sit there and just keep thinking, keep trying to understand so that I could do it on my own, I could figure it out on my own. You know, that could be one of the toughest things. But, uh, 
if you're looking for a curriculum, there's many different ways you can go about it. I'll give you my way, how I systematically, you know, learn how to paint realistic, paint well, uh, and design well. Well, hopefully, I'm designing well. Um, you know, so how I kind of saw it was first you have to get structure under your belt, right? Then you have to get lighting under your belt, and then you have to get color. Why in that order? Because I kind of look at it like, okay, well, uh, if you're the average person, you can see structure, you can see light, you can see color. If you're colorblind, perhaps you can't really see color or can't see certain colors, um, but can you still see light? Yes, you can still see light. You can still see structure. Yeah, you can still see structure. Well, what happens when you are completely blind? You can't see color, you can't see light, but you can still, I would like to think you can still see structure. It's not like um, you're falling over in your apartment every day. You have some sort of an idea of the structure that you're, you know, in the surroundings that you're familiar with. So I kind of feel like, you know, with every example, it's kind of like you're, you're taking one thing away. What is the base of all these different things, light, structure, you know, color, it starts off with structure, right? So that's what I, you know, wanted to get under my belt first. To really be able to look at things and see them in a three-dimensional way, right? Frustrating, frustrating. Um, to see complex things and to uh, interpret them in simple ways, right? Like a skull interpreting it as, uh, if I was to draw the skull as a cube, what kind of cube, what kind of tilt would it be on? Like that kind of a thing. That is fundamental. And uh, that is something that I feel I needed to really get under my belt first before moving on to anything else. Then after that, then I went on to um, lighting, right? And really just studied the heck out of lighting. And this was the same thing as um, Paul Lezane, what he told me. He just started off in black and white and just painted things black and white for the longest time, really, really understanding uh, the whole idea of lighting from a black and white, just a tonal point of view. Then from there, then we dive into color, right? And we start to do things in color and um, really strive to understand that. And then from there, you know, you can start to understand even more stuff. Or you could just stick to those because that's already a lot. And some, you know, a lot of people spend their whole entire lives just learning those things. Um, and that's it. Because it's hard enough. But if you want to, you know, think about more things after that, then you could start to um, study specific things, perhaps like subjects that you like, because they all revolve around color, light, tones, you know, even abstract things. Okay. And then Raymond asks, um, I have a question about having your own style. How important is it to have your own style as opposed to have the ability to work in a lot of different styles and still obtain the same quality of design, designing? Uh, doesn't it also mean that if you always draw in the uh, same kind of style, that somehow becomes your comfort zone? Well, that is another really great question so right on Raymond for asking that um, how important is it to have your own style well your own style gives you your identity I don't r recommend for people to 
actively search for their style, I, I recommend them to actually look for knowledge and knowledge develops a much stronger style because it has more substance, it has more, you know, knowledge behind it. Um, how important is it? I think it's really important actually because that becomes your identity. That becomes like what really starts to give uh, what you do as, you know, if you're doing what I do, gives it value almost, right? Because you become more special. You become more of an individual. Um, however, Paul Zane came up with a really good point, and he said when he looks for people at, right now he's at Warner Brothers, when he's looking at um, portfolios, he's looking for variety. He's looking to see, do I need to hire completely different people for the next project, or uh, do I think that this person's versatile enough to stay with us you know, in the long run? Which also makes a lot of sense. But I could tell you that a lot of times people will hire me for my style and they'll be like, you know, because they're a fan of the style. But then they'll say, you know, to work on this film, you know, I really like what you've been doing, but this film, what I want is something new, something fresh, something that nobody's ever seen before. A lot of people say that. You know, because that's what they all want. They don't want your, you know, like if I worked on uh, Men in Black, they don't want their movie to look like Men in Black. Even if they like the characters, right? Because they don't want to copy other people. They want to be individuals themselves. So, you know, you should have your style, yeah. Um, should you also be able to be very versatile? I'd say yes, you know, it doesn't hurt, that's for sure. It actually helps quite a lot. So a lot of times, yeah, I'll be hired for my style or whatever, but in the end, they don't want me to draw like that, right? They want me to draw in some other way. So I have to be able to do that. And uh, that comes through your fundamentals, your understanding of... Uh, the real fundamentals of you know light shadow design structure let's see if there's any other questions here <clears throat> um something that i want to bring up was oh okay there's actually a whole bunch of questions here Toby asks, have you taken all the schoolism classes? I've taken most of them. Um, I didn't take the ZBrush class yet. I would love to. Um, I haven't taken uh, Nathan Fawkes' new class, the environment design class. But it's been a really hot seller. You know, by the way, the spring sale ends this this coming Tuesday, okay? Schoolism, you know, it doesn't have too many sales. It doesn't have too many sales in a, you know, in a year. We didn't even have a Christmas sale. So if you're interested, definitely don't miss out because the sale ends uh, on Tuesday. Okay, it's $100 off, self-taught. Um, courses which you can start at any time you could buy it now you could start it later um, and it's a curriculum you know each one is has its own little curriculum uh, assignments things like that to do to really absorb the teaching that those teachers are, are giving you and it's something to really consider because you know how do you get to the top how do you get the top jobs? You, know, you could uh, learn from people that you know are at those top jobs, are still doing those top jobs, or you can learn from people that have never been there. Both cases can bring you success, absolutely. But the, your best chance of success 
is to go to those people that are doing those things. That's common sense. You know, so that's why I, I built schoolism. That's why I, you know, wholeheartedly recommend at least just trying it out one time to see what the difference is in the education. Um, let's go on to another question here. How do you pick between two things that you love, uh, that you love to do, knowing that if you keep doing both, you won't be as good as uh, as you could be at either? Says Andre. You know, I say just pick what you want to do first. Keep that in mind. That it's just you're picking what you want to do first. Okay? That doesn't mean that you're going to do that forever and ever. But just like, you know, exercising, you want to isolate certain skills and, you know, really, really develop them well. That's how you get, you know, really, uh, really good results, right? If you constantly, every day, you're just doing this one thing, you're going to get really, really good at it, guaranteed. And once you are really, really good at it, you know, perhaps pick up that other thing that you wanted to do and start getting really, really good at that because there's going to be lots and lots of um, similarities. That's for sure. Everything has similarities to everything else in one way or another. So don't be afraid of learning things that you might say, I'm not sure if I want to do that for the rest of my life. Okay, let's go on to the next question here. Mike is asking, uh, super excited for your painting creatures class. Can you give hints on how soon it might be available? Um, you know, I'm working on the trailer right now. Everything's done. All the lessons are done. I'm just working on the trailer. But yeah, I'm really excited about this class because this class is a bit more of an advanced class where you're really... I talk about ideas. I talk about, you know, what makes a great idea, how to develop great ideas, and we work on your ideas. You know, we don't work on my ideas. And uh, so far with the beta class, it's been going great. You know, it's really been going great for them and great for me because I get to help to develop, uh, you know, young artists or just artists in general help to develop their ideas with them. And we take, you know, the illustration from idea to finish through the nine weeks and then there's assignments in between as well besides those assignments to help really uh, learn and develop more foundational skills that are quite difficult like scales and limbs and fur especially hair especially you know how does that work how do you create that stuff out of your your head for something completely fictional like a creature so uh, digital painting techniques I love that it's great but painting creatures is my absolute passion so I'm very excited about this class but I want to make sure that it's Perfect before we open it up, uh, make it available. Okay, so Gabriella says, um, I've recently started getting into the habit of drawing every day. Right on! Wake up and do an hour of time gesture drawings. I've heard from a few people that I shouldn't be drawing from photographs because it's 2D already and flattens uh, those three, three surfaces. What do you think about that? I try to go to cafes to draw people and uh, figure drawing sometimes, but I can't, or it can get really expensive. Absolutely. Well, you know, photos, yeah, I totally think there's lots to learn from photos. And the whole entire thing is, it's like 
Drawing from life, that's also very true. You should draw from life. But if you can't afford uh, life drawing classes all the time, totally don't. Get four friends together. Uh, what, what we do sometimes is we just get a bunch of friends together. We sit in our studio. We all write um, ideas of how to pose, like different poses, like um, you're getting attacked by zombies. You're falling in love with a fairy or you know you're trying to catch butterflies that kind of thing and we fold up all the pieces of paper and we throw them in the middle and you know we take turns everybody picks one stands up and has to uh, you know pose and then after that person done then the next person and so on and so forth and that's free you know you could just get a bunch of friends together and just do that and you'll learn tons Especially, actually, being the person that poses, you'll learn a lot just from doing that as well. Um, let's see here. But, yeah, from photos, there's lots to learn from photos. It's great to have photos and study from photos as well because that just slows down everything so you can analyze the heck out of stuff to truly truly understand it sometimes when things are moving so much all it takes is studying a photograph a little bit then looking at the live thing again and then going oh I totally get it now right so I think the best thing to do is study from an artist right study from an artist copy their stuff really try to understand their thought process as they were painting or drawing whatever it is that they were doing then go to something like a photo copy the heck out of the photo really try to understand the photo and then try to make a version that is uh, what you think the artist that you were studying would have done to represent that photo what's happening in that photo right transferring that knowledge that you learned from copying the artist into a practical application like a, you know creating the photo in that same artist style then go to life itself draw from life itself and then try to draw from that artist style right how would the artist handle this then you go to um, then you just go to your imagination right and try to create things out of your imagination without looking at anything and try to do it in that artist style afterwards and you truly start to absorb knowledge like crazy because you're you're doing hard things you're trying to absorb the knowledge trying to understand and trying to apply it Right, so at first, you're looking at an interpretation of art, or of life, right? Which is art, somebody else's art. That's their interpretation of that particular aspect of life. Then you go to still image of life, right? Then you go to the source, life itself, the real deal and you're trying to interpret and you're trying to express uh, what you're seeing or aspects of what you're seeing in that artist style that you've been studying. But if you want to be a concept artist, if you want to be an illustrator doing the kinds of things that I'm doing, then you go, you have to go to your own imagination in the end, right? So first you go towards somebody else's interpretation of life then you go towards a still image of life then you go to the source life itself then in the end you have to become the source you become the creator of life of some alien life or whatever it is something you know that you just created out of your head that little exercise right there you'll learn just leaps and bounds Right, because it's it's totally covering so many different aspects.
And when you're learning, you know, look for that frustration like we were talking about before. That's when you know you're trying real hard. The moment people are tired and ready to stop, that's our opportunity to excel. Right? Where people will stop, we will excel because we know when you're really just frustrated, you're trying super hard, and that's the best time for growth. If you can totally get used to frustration, how unstoppable are you, are you going to be, right? That's going to be awesome. So look for that frustration. Look for when you're tired. That's our opportunity to blow past, you know, uh, most of when people would just stop. I don't like to compare to others, but you know, it's just like you want to be the best version of yourself, right? So, anyhow, um, let's go to the next one here. Matt. Matt says, uh, can you tell us two things you're terrible at just for fun? <laughs> um lots of things but let me think heights thanks Kay <laughs> she says I'm scared of heights yeah I am a little bit you know uh, I don't like heights too much I'm not petrified of heights but like um, like when we went to Eiffel Tower there's three different levels that you can go up and I only I went up to the second level which is very you know very close to the first level but very far from the third level the highest level and I was feeling it you know I was feeling it all um, in my stomach and everything just and you can feel the tower kind of swaying so that didn't help either so yes I'm a little afraid of heights um, but at the same time I can muster up the courage to you know uh, climb up whatever, like, uh, I remember climbing up those Mayan pyramids with Kay, and she was just climbing up like nothing, and I'm just, like, scared out of my wits. Uh, but I did it. You know, I did it anyways. Because sometimes, sometimes your mind is <laughs> separated from your brain. Your brain is telling you, be scared. Be scared. Right? It's telling you, feel tired. Stop. I want to stop. Sometimes you can't listen to your brain and you got to realize that your mind is separated from your brain. Your mind is the thing, it's like your conscience, it's the one that's telling you, you know, you really should keep going. You really should keep going. And sometimes you got to, you know, just take a hold, take control of your brain and just tell it, listen, I'm in control. I'm going to tell you what we're going to be doing. You're not going to be telling me what I should be doing. Okay? Fear, that's a very primitive part of your brain. You know, we have to uh, practice developing the more advanced parts of our brain, such as logic. You know, so when your brain is scared, part of your brain that, that says be afraid, it's primitive. Let's work on the advanced parts of our brain, logic, empathy. You know, that's what's going to take us far and that's what's going to take us past a lot of scary challenges, right? Because it's not really scary. It's just what we start thinking about, what we start concentrating on, that's the scary stuff. To actually do it is not scary. And sometimes you just got to wrestle your voice down and that little voice that's saying, saying shut up, you know, I want to go to sleep, I'm tired. You just wrestle with it a little bit and just smack it down. Punch it in the face. Tell it who's boss.
you know, if you practice that, you'll get better at it and better, more and more willpower. If you don't practice it, then perhaps those parts that of your brain that you know make you scared in those situations, they might get stronger over time. That's kind of like the scary part. So, you know, practice those good habits. Um, let's see here. I went through college and ended up getting my degree in a more practical field, graphic design. Many years later, I'm realizing I should have made uh, some different decisions back then. Is it really ever too late to go after a concept uh, art illustration type of career? That's from Stacy. Well, is it ever too late? No, I would say it's definitely never too late. The only thing is that I would advise, it's totally never too late. And uh, the only thing that I would advise is you want to realistically think about the price you'll have to pay. If you want something in life, there's always a price to pay. If you want to be good at skating, the price is probably, you know, your Saturday mornings or whatever as a little kid. Um, if you want to be an, a concept art illustrator, and right now you're a graphic designer, there'll be a price that you'll have to pay. So, you know, it could be either three years of nonstop, super intense, you know, 16 to 20 hour days kind of thing, like hardcore, just studying 16 hours a day for three years, I think you could totally do it. If you're constantly studying, not just practicing, but learning, actively learning as well. Uh, and in a, as a result, you're also practicing. Then yeah, I totally think three years and you'll be killer. Okay, if you're trying super hard. If you're not trying super hard, and it all depends on what your drawing level is at right now. Um, if you're not trying super hard, then perhaps it'll take you a lot longer. It will take you a lot longer. If you try super hard, you know, 16 hours in one day, it's actually more uh, benefit than if you did, you know, two days where it's trying hard uh, eight hours, you know, a day. When you concentrate it in, in a short period of time, you learn more. It's kind of like, you know, just like exercising. It really is. It's like exercise for your brain. The great thing is you have no prime, you know, like the prime of your artistic life, um, they say is when you're 50 or 60. And that's only because that's pretty much the most amount of knowledge that you're going to get before your body starts to affect you a little bit more and you don't have as much patience or as much stamina or your you know your actual your eyes are starting to get bad and you can't pick up certain colors as well anymore but at the same time we had a person uh, on schoolism that he was like 70 years old or something like that, took Jason Seiler's class, and he was doing amazing stuff after, completely professional. It was amazing. So that, to me, is complete proof. And like I was saying last time, Anthony Jones, uh, you know, he was a plumber up to age 26 before he decided to go into concept art, illustration, and now he works at Blizzard. You know, he's in his early 30s. Okay, let's go to this next one here. So that was from Stacy. Thank you very much for bringing that up, Stacy. 
How do you know what to draw? This is from Ian. Um, hey Ian, so how do you know what to draw if you don't know what particular job you want to get in, or you want to get in the industry? Are there general skills that apply to more than one career path? Absolutely. The fundamentals of art, lighting, structure, color, design, these things will transfer to all sorts of stuff, you know, and emotion to really think about how to have a painting really give off a certain emotion. You know, that's really important as well. Those kind of things can transfer all over the place. Um, let's see here. What's the next one? I'd like to ask about talking to artists in person. What are the mistakes you often see people do? Oh, when you talk when you're talking to Sorry. What are the mistakes that you see people do when talking to you or your friends? Are there any people you remember that made an impression when approaching you? That was a great, great question, Monica, because, yeah, at these conventions, it's like if you're popular or whatever, you're going to be meeting tons of people, and it's very difficult to remember anybody after a day of just talking to hundreds of people. Um, your brain kind of just turns into mush. How do you make a good impression? Well, something that always gets me are people that tell me something you know about what I do or whatever that only the hardcore fans would know you know like if you say to me hey you know I was listening to the chew stream <laughs> you know perhaps you answered one of my questions or something like that then all of a sudden I would feel this connection with you right because what I do here is something very personal and it's a lot more for the hardcore artists so I feel a connection um, another thing that can really help is you bring up something that something from a while back you know if, if somebody said to me or I'm sure if somebody said to Kay I've been following your stuff since your very first website before ter before Imaginism Studios it was actually called torontostudios.com I actually bought it for her for her birthday I uh, made this website for her her first website and it's called torontostudios.com why because I just figured we're in Toronto if people are looking for studios in Toronto to hire uh, and they looked up Toronto Studios, they would get to Kay's website first. <laughs> so, so that's why I gave her that, you know, that domain name. But if somebody said to her, yeah, I totally remember the Bubblegum Girls from your Toronto Studios website, I'm sure she'll be like, wow, what's your name? You know, and just, because there's a more of a connection. Um, don't, you know, what I do is I try to think about what everybody else will tell this person and don't say that. Don't talk about that. Because isn't it kind of annoying when everybody's just asking you the same thing and you have to say the same thing? That's when your automatic answering machine turns on and you just start saying, um, you know, you, you just start saying, the typical thing and you almost go into robot mode right another thing to remember is that we're all human we're all just people and the one thing our the favorite conversation the favorite topic that artists um, or people love their favorite topic is them it's themselves so the one kind of mistake that I'll see a lot of people do is it's good to talk you know to talk about yourself and tell people what it is you do and that kind of stuff 
but don't drag it on. If you want to, you know, develop a, a better rapport with somebody, ask them questions about themselves interesting things that they you know might make them go hmm because they don't really they're not really used to those kinds of um of discussions and it's great to be able to just you know create great conversations has to be genuine case says absolutely has to be genuine well you know, talk to people that you're genuinely interested in. Don't be fake. I'll tell you, um, I have very few regrets. But I do have this one little regret. And it's embarrassing, but I'll tell you guys because you guys are awesome. And that's what this whole entire talk is all about. Okay? Um, the first time and the last time that I met uh, Neville Page, you know, character, designer, artist extraordinaire. He's worked on so many of my favorite films. I met him at Comic-Con. And at Comic-Con, this is before I, I met uh, Scott Robertson. At Comic-Con, he was wearing Scott Robertson's uh, name tag. And so I never met Scott Robertson before, and I've been a fan of his as well. And so when Neville Page came over, I was like, oh, you're Scott Robertson. And he said, no, 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 that's a friend of mine. Um, I'm Neville Page. And like I said, when you go to Comic-Con, your brain literally becomes mush if you're a vendor, because you're just talking to so many people. And as a result, I didn't remember who Neville Page was at that time. It sounded kind of familiar, but I didn't know. So I go to him and I'm like, oh, Neville Page. I never do this. I never do this. But I was just like, oh, you know, like as if I did remember. But I totally didn't. And he can tell. And that's why I never, ever, ever do this. This is the only time I've ever done this, and it totally bit me in the ass. Scarred and scarred me a bit. Okay. Thanks, Kate. Um, yeah, so I was like, yeah, uh, no, yeah. And then he was like, it's okay. Don't worry about it. And then I was like, no, no, no. Um, no, I do remember. And then I'm just like... Uh, you know, totally just crashing and burning, and I'm like, w what did you work on? You know, like that, and it's just so embarrassing, and then he was just like, oh, well, like Star Trek, <laughs> you know, like uh, Watchmen, um, Avatar, all these things, and I was, and then he was just like, it's okay. He was super nice about it, walked away. But I just felt just so embarrassed and so bad, and that was like a huge regret. So there you go, a little confession time. Um, yeah, and that's why now if somebody asks me, do you remember me? I'll always tell the truth. Usually I'll just say, don't do this to me. Because at Comic-Con, it's just not fair. Any other situation, I would probably remember. Anyways, um, let's go to another question here, because there's a bunch. So Joan asks, uh, you always talk about the benefits of being an early bird in, in order to both have time for your own stuff and get the most of the day. I totally agree, but I have a hard time finding the drive to wake up early and always end up being a late owl. Any recommendations? Great question, Joan. All you need is one tough day where if you go to sleep early or you go to sleep late, you just get up early anyways. Try this. This is what I do. I turn my alarm up to maximum and I put my alarm outside, not in the bedroom. 
So I only have like, you know, a few seconds before everybody starts waking up. In this case, it's just K. So thank you, K, for being so patient with my alarm. But um, yeah, that's what I do. So like the alarm was ringing this morning, I was super tired, but it's not gonna stop until I f actually get up out of my bedroom, go over uh, and turn it off, turn off my alarm that's, that's outside. That's a great way to get up uh, when you know you don't want to. And by the time you get up, you know, you're, you're active, you're rushing over to turn off the alarm, you turn it off, you're pretty awake after that. Right? So it's, it's good. Um, but yeah, definitely recommend get up early. You know, be an early bird. Do your own work before you start work. You know, why give those best hours to, uh, you know, somebody else's job? Now, still, you want to put your best foot forward, but what I'm saying is when you give the best hours of the day to yourself, what is happening in the long run is you're evolving your art. You're getting better adding more value to what you do because when you do what you want to do it's so much easier to get better at it right so in the long run it is good for your clients that you don't actually give them the best days of your or the best hours of your day right in the long run it it helps and it's just freaking great when you get up before the sun rises and you see that sunrise and you know there's hardly anybody out there that just got up at 4.30 or 5 o'clock or whatever it is in the morning. You know that you're pretty much this very small percentile. And again, it, it helps strengthen willpower. Okay. Nicholas asks, uh, you said you started working professionally at a young age. What was that job and how did you get it? Yeah, I started working uh, as a teenager. I think I was 17 at the time. Um, at this place called Thinkway Toys. Wonderful, you know, people, really nice place. And they do toys uh, for movies. A lot of Pixar toys. A lot of Disney toys, Batman, Spider-Man, all this stuff. All these high-end licensed toys. So I got to work in their art department because I didn't waste my lunch hours. You know, I spent them learning these new uh, programs called Illustrator and Photoshop. So when it got really busy, I just asked. I said, you know, can I, can I help? And the person I was talking to that's been like helping me learn Illustrator and Photoshop, he kind of turned to the art director and said, yeah, let him try. You know, I've been teaching him some stuff. And then she said yes. And then, you know, I got moved to the art department. But they wanted, you know, to keep me in the warehouse at a point. So it's totally about speaking up you know going for what what you want um, life will never it will very rarely give you what you deserve it'll give you what you negotiate so learn to negotiate learn to ask learn to ask in a good you know a friendly way you don't want to burn any bridges you don't want to be annoying but, you know, that's another good reason to not just practice the art of painting and drawing, but the art of conversation. Okay. So, time's almost up. I got about four minutes left. So, you know, if you don't get anything out of <laughs> any of these talks, let me give you the things that you should definitely remember, right? 
knowledge gives you options and options give you more possibilities search for knowledge it's not just about practicing every day that will help as well but if you really want to turbocharge your career your skills your life perhaps search for knowledge and through knowledge you know you practice that will accelerate your learning way faster and the other thing that you know I hope that you can take away from all these talks is the whole entire idea that the true test of determination is when you're faced with unfavorable situations right? that's when we uh, really find out how badly do we want it it's not about those great days where you know everything's perfect and you're just having a wonderful day so you decide to draw those days are important as well but the real test is when you come towards unfavorable situations because that's when people will crumble or excel and uh, I guess the last thing if I was to pick three things is is the whole entire idea of communication you know I have friends that are considered geniuses with their IQ level or whatever but have trouble communicating and struggle with their career still gotta learn how to communicate you know you might think well you know how to smooth or whatever I don't want to do that I don't want to be that person but also if you're in a game if you're in a movie or whatever you're gonna have to learn how to communicate well because you need to it's a team effort right you need to interpret people's um, expectations what they want or whatever and you need to express your own ideas well that's through communication okay so those are my little um, kind of bullet points on some of the things that are I find the most important to a person's success of course there's many ways to succeed and what I'm telling you is just it's my way of how the things that I felt were the most important for um, the success that I've you know, experienced so far but that doesn't mean that's the only way, okay? So at this point, it's 11 o'clock. Let's go to the internet and I'm gonna pick somebody at random and give this drawing away. Just loading everything up. And let's see here. So Max Mentor. Okay, so I'm gonna write down your name here. I probably I'm gonna say your name a little wrong. Please uh, accept my apologies in advance. But your first name, I definitely know how to say Max. Congratulations, Max. And then uh, Mantur, I guess. M A N T U R. Okay, so congratulations, Max, for winning this uh, drawing here. What is it? I'm not quite sure, but I kind of like it. It's kind of like a turtle deer with a forest on its back and these little shadowy uh, creatures, um, you know, living on the back of this thing. Okay. So, oh, by the way, if you want to stay up to date with uh, schoolism stuff, you know, new classes, chew streams, uh, new workshops. 
sales, interviews, you know, things that I hope are going to be helpful for artists. Um, you know, if you just signed up for a Schoolism account, that doesn't mean that you're on our newsletter, okay? Because we don't want to put people that don't want to be on our newsletter on our newsletter. So, all you have to do is go to bit.do slash schoolism hyphen newsletter, okay? Newsletter. And uh, I try to only put on important stuff. So sign up. If you don't like it, you can unsubscribe very easily, but it'd be a great way for me to you know keep you up to date on what's happening and things that you might be interested in okay so thank you very much to everybody that showed up here and a big congratulations goes out to max congratulations i'm gonna be messaging you to try to get your address so that i can send this uh this card out to you okay so thanks everybody and have an awesome awesome thursday you know, stay positive and uh, be well. All right. See you later.